Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from ControlPaint.com. And today we're going to continue talking about masking, but we're gonna make a little series talking about nested masks. And that's when you put one mask inside of another one. Sound confusing? Don't worry, it's not. So here you can see in this little character design, I have a layer group with a primary mask. This is just a layer mask that's gonna define his silhouette. And as you can see, if I were to hide it, I have painted outside of the lines because I didn't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna show that mask one more time and keep that white of the page nice and clean. So now where the nested masking comes in is when I make masks on the layers that are inside of this group. So let's look at this blue paint layer. I can see that all of the blue paint on my character is one layer. Well, what if I wanted it to be a little worn, like he's seen some action? Well, I don't really want to erase it because that's gonna limit my options. I wanna work non-destructively. So if I were to put an empty mask on this layer and then begin painting with black, I could wear the paint. It's chipped and it's faded, but maybe I went too far. Okay, well then I would bring it back by painting with white. So really all I'm doing is altering the mask. And this is called working non-destructively. And this is gonna give me a lot of options. Now when I'm just working with the blue paint, it's maybe not quite obvious yet. But working this way really gets interesting when you start having more complexity on your character. Now I'm gonna add some dirt to this guy. All right, now I'm gonna make a new layer on top of the blue paint, and I'm gonna do the dirt in two phases. I'm gonna start with sort of a base coat of dirt. And for this, I'm just gonna use a soft, round brush. Now I'm gonna paint it on pretty heavy. It's gonna be dirtier towards his feet and fades towards the top. Okay, that's a lot of dirt. All right, now I'm gonna do another layer of dots of dirt. And I'm gonna make these a little bit lighter, like they've had a little longer to dry. I'm gonna be using a custom brush to get the sort of dot pattern. Now, as you can see, I'm not really being too nuanced with this. I'm putting on a lot of paint. But now that I've got these two components of dirt, the fade as well as the dots, I can put a mask on each of them and then begin to add the nuance. And all the while, I'm gonna be working non-destructively. So first, I'm gonna start removing some of that initial fade. So as I paint with black in the mask, I can remove some of that dirt. So maybe I'll remove it a bit here on the arms, but then I wanna add it back into those cracks in between the armor. Like it got in there and then it dried and then the rest got wiped away afterwards. So this way, I'm really just sort of pushing and pulling the paint that's already on the canvas, not erasing anything away. I'm just deciding how much of this do I want versus the other layer. So maybe now I want to remove some of those dots. So I'll work on the dot layer, and I'm painting with black in the mask to remove some of that paint. So here I'm going to make the dots less pronounced up in the torso. And in doing so, they're more evident down at the lower ends of the limbs. Actually, now that I look at it, I think I want a little bit of that fade back. No problem. It's on its own layer and it's got a mask. So I go back to the lower layer of the dirt, pick white as my color, and I begin to bring some of that back. So I'm sort of re-adding the dirt back onto my character. And I want to remove some from the torso. I want it to be mainly on the limbs. So as you can see here, I have separated each of the components of this material into different layers, which gives me incredible flexibility. Because what if I wanted to change the blue paint to red paint? Well, it's on its own layer, so doing that is incredibly easy. I can change it to any color I want, and it doesn't make any difference. But you can see each of these layers has the nuance added and the control added with these masks. And this is called nesting masks because all of these layers are inside of the primary mask, which is the character silhouette, and then each individual layer 
has its own mask. This is one of those concepts that you really have to try before you understand it. It might seem confusing on screen, but once you start using that mask and removing and adding paint, it'll start to make sense. So I've gone ahead and included this PSD file on the post. And your assignment is to experiment with nested masks to make overlays on this character. Maybe you want to add some more colors, maybe you want to add bullet holes, whatever it is. Try adding on a lot of paint and then using layer masks to kind of add nuance and mix and match. So have fun masking and thanks for coming to controlpaint.com.